Tonight's story really is an adventure of the mind. We don't know very much about the mind, a lot less than the psychologists pretend they do. In particular, we know very little about those peculiar qualities of mind that have made it possible for some individuals to see things at a great distance, either in space or in time. But these incidents have happened. Father's room, Captain Thompson. Just make yourself comfortable. Uh, you let me know. Of course, the minute there's any news. Now, don't worry. Your wife will be fine. Would you like a cup of coffee, Captain? You look rather worn out. Oh, no, no, thanks. I'd... Oh, yes, yes. I'd... I would like a cup. Thanks. I have no time to eat since yesterday. Well, just sit down and I'll be right back with one. Uh... You do look beat, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't see you there, the glare from that lamp. First kid? Yes, yes. Oh, well, you have three of them like I have. I was uh, out at the base, started for town here as soon as she phoned she was leaving for the hospital, but it still takes 40 minutes to get in. You part of that uh, rocket business? The space medicine experimental. See, is that where they're using you guys as guinea pigs? I read they were even trying to look at it. I'm sorry, I can't talk about it. Oh, but I read it in the paper. Well, I'm sorry. I still can't talk about it. Doesn't that doctor have anything to do but stand around and wait? I'm going to talk to him. Oh, relax. You can't do anything. Here, the doctors can do something. Even the nurses can do something. Fathers can't do anything. You might as well get used to it. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Why don't you try to get some sleep? Close your eyes and lean back. Might be hours yet. Yeah, maybe you're right. Oh. To have my eyes closed. 28 hours. Tension, emotion, new technique. Here's a nice hot cup of coffee for you, Captain. Oh. oh, he's conked out already. Maybe you just better let him sleep. No mental barrier. Future. He seems to be dreaming. I, I never saw a man look so worn out. Pull back. Pull back into the, into the woods. No point in waking him. No, no. Leave him be. Get the kids and the old people back. You hear me? Over there? Get them back. Back. Over there by that brush pile. I seen him go down. There. What'd I tell you? Thompson. Harvey, you hit one. What? 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 It's me, Glenn, and Diego. Don't you know us? Hey, look at his forehead, Diego. He must have run spank into a tree limb. Where am I? What's going on? Oh, he really gave himself a knock. <laughs> hey, on. Hey, let's see the woods again. You gotta get out of here. You got hard, Diego. Them bugs will be in here in 15 minutes. What? You just had us hush up and fall. Oh, Leave no time to talk now. <laughs> Pretty good, eh? We all just sort of stumbled onto it. Sit down, Harvey. Bandage that head of yours while we talk. Oh. Clanton, tell him about your end of it first. Well, I left you with your covering guard. Moved the rest all back through the brush, Harvey. We didn't have a bit of trouble at all. When I got the men flung around this spot here, and it's a natural for defense, Harvey. There's trees so thick you can't see through them unless you... Well, unless they come over a treetop height. Then I went back to see about you and the boys, and I met Korshank and Swenson. They told me Talbot and Guido was burned, and you was lost. Hey, you came for me? Diego, he was still there looking around for you. I just helped him, that's all. Uh, and just as we found you, a troll of the bugs came along, along the road there, at the edge of the woods, shooting into it. You know how to do it. Oh, hold still. Hey, how we set up camp here. Oh, we're a good two mile back in, safe enough for an hour or two. There, it fixes you. Now, about my end of it, Harvey. I had the women, the children, the old people rounded up before the patrol that spotted us hit. I don't think the Kinoids even had a chance to count us. I don't think they even guess us to be a party as large as we are. 
After all, they've cleaned up everything but a few stragglers south of the Great Lakes and west of Denver. Anyway, I got them all back through the woods, and I've set up a separate camp for them about 500 yards back in. Your dad was a big help, by the way. He practically carried your wife most of the trip. I'm afraid it was maybe too much for him. My wife... Now, sit where you are. You can't do anything about her anyway. Mm. There's no reason to expect complications. She had your first son without trouble, didn't she? Yeah, but that, that was in the hospital. Will you forget your wife for five minutes? There's 238 other people here who need you right now. I was giving my report. Go on, go on. Go on. It's better. Now, the old people are tired, and so are the kids. But the kids will recover. We've got straight woods behind us, and there's about a four-day supply of food left. The question is, can we make the Ketiko in that time? My man can get along right well on half rations. Fighting and night marching all the way? And what about my bunch? The young women and the older kids will be all right. The younger kids wouldn't take turns carrying, but the older men and women. Maybe won't chase us clear to where the old Canadian border used to be. We hit thick brush before that. You know they will. We have to go deep into the north woods or they'll follow us. That's what's behind this whole Kinoid offensive. They've got to exterminate us inside of the next few years, or their own mutated virus diseases will win the war for us. Half the last few Kinoids have been sick and dying. I wish I was sure of that as you are, Maria. Well, if I'm not sure, it doesn't matter. Here's a map. Now, here we are now, Harvey. Sixty miles from the border. Yes, yes, I see. Well, what... What do you want me to do? Do? Are you sick, Harvey? You're in command of this group. Or did that hit on the head knock your brains completely silly? You ought to tell us what to do, Planter and me with our groups. Wait, but... It must be my head. I don't seem to remember. If you could just let me think for a while. Think? We've got two hours until sundown. And if you want to survive, we've got to head for the border tonight. Are you telling us you aren't fit to command this bunch of ours? I... I'm sorry. All right. You better take over, Clinton. Why not you? You know I can't handle the men. Well, we'll get your group and my group moving as fast as the sun's down. They've all been fed. But Harvey, whatever's wrong with you, you better get over it quick. Because there's 239 people here who'll never reach Ketiko without you in charge. I promise you that. I wish we could move the group by road or across farmland. Well, why not? Why not? You want the Kinoids to spot us. Maria, what are the Kinoids? You know, I... I do believe you mean that. I do. I, do. I, I never heard of amnesia like this before... Look, you know you're Harvey Thompson, don't you? Yes. And you know we're in what used to be Minnesota, heading north on foot toward the Ketiko Superior National Forest on the Canadian border, don't you? Yes, yes. But you don't know the Kinoids spotted our first attempts at space flight and moved in to wipe us out. No. But why did they? Why, they're from Alpha Centauri, the nearest sun with inhabitable planets by our standards. We'd have headed there next. Well, couldn't anyone explain to them that we wouldn't take their worlds? Wouldn't we? What makes you so sure? Anyway, this is the way it worked out. Now, if little groups like ours can survive long enough, the kinoids will be decimated by their own mutated diseases. They'll have to pull back. We can build again and then go after them. Are they really bugs? No, oh, it's just a name some soldiers gave them. No, no, they're almost human, but not quite. Now do you remember? I don't know. Harvey... I shouldn't tell you this, but I'm fond enough of you to want you whole and sensible again for your own sake, aside from... Aside from what, Maria? Aside from the fact that there's only one man in this group that all the rest will obey without question, and that's you. So far, Clanton and I haven't told anyone that you aren't still giving the orders. Now think about that, Harvey. Because if you can't pull us through to safety, nobody can. Remember that. <laughs> Oh, Maria. Maria, where's my wife? I haven't had a chance to see her. No time for that now. Clanton just came in. We're all ready for that council that you called. Council? Come I... along. These people can't know yet you're not directing them. Ready and willing, Maria. Sit down, Harvey. Yeah. How are the men, Clanton? Worn out. How are the non-competents? 
too tired to eat breakfast, most of them. I've left orders for them all to get something in them before they try to sleep. My, my... Your wife and son are fine, Harvey. She walked part way and rode in the litter when she got tired. Your father is in much worse shape. He'll insist on helping her. Scouts are back in. We've got a little stretch of open territory ahead. No way to avoid it. Kinoid's waiting for us? That's right. About a patrol. They couldn't figure we'd come this way or there'd be more. As it is, we got to get through them fast. They'll be calling for help. How fast? You ready to take over, Harvey? I just wondered how fast. Fifteen minutes, if we're lucky. And there's 300 yards of open to cross. Mm -hmm. Then we're in thick brush for at least 10 miles. Well, it's best, I suppose, to hit them at twilight. They won't come after us in the dark. Not in the brush. Not even with air spawn. What's the ground like? Give me this stick here. The woods juts out like this, and it's meadow both sides. From this point to where they're sitting. <laughs> that drumming mean? Nothing. They do that morning, noon, and evening when there's nothing else to do. What a bad position. I got them laid out in the grass in a half circle, like you said. Halfway we clear around them bugs. All right. Give me the whistle. Close with them! Close with them! Use your knife! Would you mind letting us talk by ourselves for a minute? I want a private word with Harvey. All right with me. What is it? Do you have to move the group right away? Yes, why? Some of mine can't. Well, how bad are they? Pretty bad. They need a day or two of complete rest, right now. We can't wait, Maria. We just can't. That's what I was afraid of. The Kinoids will be right at our backs at dawn. If they can keep after us and harry us, they'll wear us all down eventually. And we can't go on fighting for every little clearing. We've got to lose them now. But who, who is it? Which ones can't go on? Not the children, not my boy. No, not your wife or your boy or any of that group. They've all been worn down by this march, but they're young enough to bounce back. It's the old people that don't. The old? Yes. We've got ten older women, three older men, including your father, Harvey. They can't go any farther. Well, not, not Dad, but he's in good shape for his age. That's just it, for his age. Under ordinary conditions, you don't notice how quickly an old person tires because they're always catching little rests. On a march like this, though... We can't just leave them. We can't... I'm sorry, Harvey. Their lives, or the rest of the group. And you're in command. But the Kinoids would find them before noon tomorrow, and old people with nothing to defend themselves with. The older people have sons and daughters in the group, too. They'd never stand for abandoning their parents. It's up to you. Harvey, I'm sorry. If you want me, I'll be over there with Clinton. Sleeping. You were having some nightmare there. Oh. What is it, nurse? A boy, Captain Thompson. You're the father of a boy. Oh. <laughs> I have to carry him. Oh, that's the older one. He's all right. Oh. Pardon me. I'm, I'm still groggy, I guess. A boy. Oh, where is he? How's my wife? Oh, your wife's just fine. She's still in recovery, and you can talk to her in a few minutes. Oh, good. Your son's in an incubator. He's just a little bit lightweight. You can see him in a minute, too. Good. The doctor will talk to you shortly, but will you come down the hall right now, and we'll get the birth certificate filled out? Oh, sure, sure. You can sit right there, Captain Thompson, on the side of the desk. Now, what name have you and your wife picked out for a son? Name? I see. Let's see. Oh, yes, Harvey. 
Harvey Walter Thompson, Jr. Harvey Walter... Captain Thompson? Yes? Well, Captain Thompson, of course, we'll put down whatever you want, but I notice on the admittance slip here your wife's name is down as Mrs. John W. Thompson. Your name is... John! John, that can't be right. Now, Harvey was my wife's choice. She had the name all... My name is John. Well, yes, that's what we have down here on the admittance slip. My son's name is Harvey. Just plain Harvey Walter Thompson. No junior. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's easy to be confused. You'd be surprised at some of the fathers. Captain Thompson, are, are you all right? Uh, all right, then. I'm, I'm all right. I'm well, right. then if you'll sign here. Uh, yes, yes. And now it's official. You've got a son to take care of you in your old age, Captain Thompson. Yes. To make the decisions. Star. Men first. Scientists later. The fact of being a man means that they have human emotions, human needs, wills, desires. It's hard for a scientist, as it is for any other man, to see his whole life orientations, his deepest beliefs, not flat. When Einstein's theories of relativity were first established, there was one of the major astrophysicists who committed suicide. All he believed had been demolished. Are our scientists to be expected to be any more able to take the shattering blow that the reality of clairvoyance would mean than the other people of our society? There have been incidents, but the scientists uh, don't like them. I don't think any of us do, but they're there. <laughs> 